Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, another Warhammer video. I wanted to show you how we painted up the Locust Heavy Destroyer from the Necrons. So this dude was fun to paint. Uh, he went pretty quick, actually. Um, color scheme is typical of the rest of the Necrons I've been doing. So the Zarkin Dynasty. So uh, we did primer in Chaos Black with the primer spray, right? Rune Lord Brass for the for the uh, you know, brassy armor panels, lead belcher for the silver. Um, the brass gets a wash of uh, Rekarth Flesh Shade, I think. Rekarth Flesh Shade to get um, a little bit of texture on it, and then all of the silver gets null oil uh, for a wash. Some of the, all the black is just the Chaos Black Spray. Touched up with the Abaddon Black as needed. Um, for this guy, I did a few new things to try. First off, um, you'll notice these big armor panels here. They're backwards. I put them on backwards because I can't read directions. Uh, I think this is common. So for anyone that sees this, you, yeah, I know they're backwards. Um, but they were kind of on too late, so we just decided to leave them. Um, these panels, it's kind of a new color for the Necron scheme, so trying to figure out what this color is. It is actually, um, it is Warplock Bronze for that color to try and to match what the reference art is on Games Workshop's website. So we painted those in Warplock Bronze, and then the um, the raised lettering there you see, just kind of a highlight, kind of dry brush of the Rune Lord Brass to make that pop. You know, more like under the undercarriage here, right? Same kind of color palette with Lead Belcher and the Brass and everything like that. So some of the details of this thing I want to go over. Uh, first off, all the glowy orbs. We started them off with a, a Caliban green as a base coat, a really dark green that you see, and then layered up to uh, Warpstone Glow. I think I'm looking. Yeah, we used uh, Warpstone Glow, layering up to finally the brightest color, which is a Moot Green on that bright green. So try to use that instead of the Tesseract just to see what it would do and what it'd look like playing around with these new colors. I think it turned out okay. Um, what you can also see here is on these orbs, this is my first attempt at object source lighting. Uh, and obviously not very good, uh, but my first attempt, just basically what I, and the technique that I tried to use was I basically made the green, you know, shadow rather the lighting uh glow around it i made it more pronounced and then i went back in with the um warplock bronze and kind of stippled over it to try to mute mute the color back out to give it a, a softer effect so that's what i tried i'll continue to work on it but uh yeah i look I try to look for opportunities to improve by doing these things uh the other thing i did for opportunities to improve was to try some edge highlighting. So you can see on the helmet, basically all the black. So on the helmet, as well as on the gun, I tried edge highlighting with uh, gray. That's a Mechanicus standard gray is what I chose to use to try to you know make the gun pop a little bit and to do just a little bit more on this guy. So we did edge highlighting there of Mechanicus standard gray. The gun and the glowy bits are using Tesseract Glow, I think think yeah no the orbs are tesseract glow i'm trying to remember this cable i tried to do the green light green dark green blend that games workshop did at least I'd approximate it to play around with it and so that's kind of the combination of that calabag green uh with uh, some of those other green tones you know to to try to to make it look like a you know energy flowing through um the other thing with this guy and this is the first model that we've done this and, and more videos to come on more examples of this, but this guy is magnetized. So, because this guy comes with two weapon options, basically an anti-tank and then an anti-personnel. So if I can get this going and kind of pull this guy off, let's see, he is magnetized. So I glued a magnet on his little arm stub there. I, I might have had to cut a piece off and then glued a magnet there on his arm stub. I believe that's a two millimeter by one millimeter. And then on the gun itself, I cored out that little pocket and put a magnet in there. Then also what I did was basically cut out tabs and kind of reamed out this hole here and this hole kind of in the back and cutting off tabs uh, to where things fit. So the problem here is 
These arms are pretty fragile. I've broken them off multiple times. So this guy right here, I cut his little tab off and I just kind of have them setting in place to where originally this fit up and this was just kind of a dry fit into that socket and it was held together by the magnet on this arm and then a friction fit by this little tab here. And that works pretty well, um, but these arms can get a little fragile. Uh, speaking of fragility, the other thing is I broke this guy off his base. So he connects to, to the rock right there. And that is, was just a piece of plastic and it didn't last very long. So what I did there, that is a piece of three and a half millimeter audio jack, like a male three and a half millimeter audio jack that I basically cut down. And then I drilled out holes and super glued all that in. So it's solid brass and it's a lot more sturdy. Um, I have not painted it, you know, I mean, ideally, I think I've already painted it black or something just to kind of mask it, but right now it's just, a, you know, the, uh, the audio jack. So it doesn't look horrible, but, uh, it doesn't certainly fit. So take care when assembling this thing as uh, that part can be fragile. Uh, the last thing here I'll show you is the other weapon option, which is this guy. I can't even remember what the name of the gun is, but that's where he is in the same pattern, right? Drill a magnet in there. And then so you can see if I can do this one-handed while looking through the camera. So he kind of attaches there. And then he would, you know, put this up in there like that one-handed. And then the cable, you can see here, it should connect in there. Um, I have fiddled with this too many times and, and broken this little lead off and had to, you know, clock this to get the angle right. And in the end, it's just not. You know, it's not going to kind of go there. I can kind of make it work, and I can maybe put a magnet there if I really cared. But for this one, I don't want to break it further. So the next one, I'll, I'll do better if I do another one of these Locust Heavies, which if uh, my son has his way, he definitely wants more because why don't you want a full squad of these guys? So anyway, that is the Locust Heavy and magnetized. So I will probably be doing more videos uh, like this. Um... You know, talking about magnetization, I've got some coming up that are certainly more complex than this, but uh, this gives you kind of the intro. So I appreciate y'all watching, um, and we'll see you in the next one.